This is an Angular application that uses no classes and no decorators anywhere in the entire application. It is highly experimental, but with the help of Analog.js, a meta framework built on top of Angular, this is all working code that we can actually use today. This isn't just a simple demo application either. I've refactored the real-time chat application from my Angular course into this new format. It uses Firebase for authentication and Firestore for storage, and uses a bunch of the things we all love from Angular. Dependency injection, injectable services, injection tokens, forms, validators, material design components, and more. That's an important thing to keep in mind with these changes. The changes are mostly related to developer experience. We can still use almost all of the goodies that the Angular framework provides. It's an Angular that looks different, but mostly functions the same. Another important thing to keep in mind is that this is still experimental and under active development. There is still a lot of work to be done. So let's look at some of the key aspects here, starting with the big one, the .ng format for creating Angular components. This provides a similar component authoring experience to Svelte or Vue and can remove a ton of boilerplate. If all we need is a simple UI component, then we can just drop in the template and we are done. No need for all of this. To use it, we can import it like this and use it directly in the template. This also removes the need for the double import in the component decorator. But this isn't a simple UI component. It's my message list component, and it's going to need some inputs. But I can just drop in a script section, and with next to no fuss or boilerplate, you've got what you need ready to be used in the template. And let's not forget the styles. We can also drop in those two if we need. So now let's take a look at a more complex component, like the smart component for the main chat page. As you can see here, whilst this format allows us to avoid metadata in a lot of cases, we can still supply metadata if we need to by using the define metadata method. You can see here, I am importing some material design modules. I'm also injecting some dependencies and I've created a signal effect as well. Notice how we can just create an effect directly now rather than having to add a constructor just to run the effect. You might also notice I'm using analog.js's file-based routing here. So rather than defining routes manually, the routes are determined by the structure of this pages folder. Again, similar to Svelte. This is not specifically part of the .ng file format. This is a separate feature of Analog.js. Now, I've already told you that this application uses no classes or decorators. So you might be wondering what is going on with these services. The .ng format doesn't actually touch services. Whilst there isn't really anything wrong with leaving services as they are, it does feel a bit weird for this to be the only place in the application that uses classes and decorators, concepts which were otherwise eliminated. So that's why I decided to revisit a somewhat controversial approach I've made a video about in the past, using injection tokens to create services using functions instead of classes. We added a function to ng extension called create service, which is essentially the same thing as the create injection token function we used before, but it's tailored to creating injectable services rather than injection tokens in general. So this allowed me to create all of the services in this application like this. I'll link to the other video that discusses how this approach works in more detail and some of the benefits. But the general idea is that we supply a function to create service that returns the public API for our service. In this register service, you can see I'm doing a bunch of servicey state stuff in here. And then I return the status signal and a subject for creating a user, which is the public API of this service. Everything else is private and internal to the service. Whilst I do think there are benefits to this approach when creating services in general, it feels like a much more natural approach in the context of the .ng format. My general view of these changes are that they remove a lot of boilerplate and unnecessary concepts and lose nothing important about what makes Angular Angular. I think it would be a net developer experience win for existing Angular devs, and some initial sentiment seems to back that. But what is more important is that I think it will make Angular more appealing and approachable to new Angular developers. Again, without actually losing the things that make Angular a powerful and scalable framework. And I don't think catering to new developers is just some altruistic thing to do. Most of us will benefit from it. More Angular developers means that businesses will have an easier time hiring Angular developers, which means they are more incentivized to stick with Angular or even move to Angular. More businesses using Angular means more job opportunities for Angular developers, and more Angular developers means a stronger Angular community with more and better maintained open source projects to help make Angular even better. 
The only missed play here really is for highly experienced Angular developers who actually probably would profit from a decreasing number of Angular developers and could make sweet consulting money maintaining legacy systems. But I don't want Angular to slowly become a dying legacy framework. And judging by the great innovations we've had from the Angular team recently, I think it's clear that's not the path they want either. I doubt we are going to see this approach adopted wholesale by the Angular team, but I think it's clear we are already moving down the path to an improved Angular developer experience. And some of these ideas might eventually find their way into the core framework. So what do you want your Angular applications to look like two years from now? If you like this video, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again next time.